Welcome to Ancient World Studies. My name is Dr. Raul McLaughlin. This is part three of a video lecture about ancient Chinese dragon coins that include Greek text in their design. The question is, why did the ancient Chinese need to create pseudo-Greek currency? Strange hybrid coins have been found in China that combine images of a Han dragon with ancient Greek text. These coins probably date to an era when the Chinese first discovered the distant West and contacted remnants of Greek civilization in Fergana and Bactria, ancient Afghanistan. The coins may be a reaction to Greek currency or part of a failed Chinese policy to influence, integrate into, or control distant foreign markets. The Chinese Empire first became aware of the distant West when the Han envoy, Chang Chan, returned from Bactria in 124 BC. He confirmed the existence of large and prosperous states in these distant territories, including the Kingdom of Parthia in eastern Iran. Perhaps he brought back silver drachmas and tetradrachmas, bearing the portraits of foreign rulers with their titles inscribed in minuscule Greek script. From the Han perspective, these coins were unusual, since ancient Chinese currency consisted almost entirely of low-value bronze and copper coins. The Han histories record contemporary details of the distant West, and confirm the unique appearance of Western coins in Chinese accounts of Parthia. The Chinese text reports that in Parthia, they make coins of silver, the coins resemble their king's face. Upon the death of a king, the coins are changed for others, on which the new king's face is represented. They paint rows of characters, running sideways on stiff leather, to serve as records. These Parthian, tetradrachma, might have inspired the Chinese dragon coins. This is consistent with the distribution of the dragon coin finds. Most of the dragon coins are reported to have been found in the Herse Corridor, which was a territory conquered and colonised by the Han Empire between 123 and 119 BC. This strategic region incorporated an arid belt of grassland 600 miles long that allowed passage from Inner China to the Tarim territories of Central Asia. The region was crucial in Chinese efforts to gain control over the Tarim kingdoms and establish contacts with Fergana. It also became a key component in the merchant silk routes that developed between China and Iran in the 1st century BC. A possible reference to the dragon coins appears in the leading Chinese history of this era, the records of the grand historian, Sima Chan. The text describes how government finances were exhausted by the cost of waging large-scale campaigns against the hostile Sungnu Empire, which dominated steppe lands to the north of China. Enormous costs had also been incurred by the state in establishing farming colonies, military outposts, a new towns in the Herse Corridor. Diplomatic expeditions to the distant west had further depleted government funds, as the envoys were supplied with gifts and political bribes worth millions in Chinese currency. The Chinese state had several strategies for dealing with financial deficits. In a crisis, they could prohibit private minting of new coinage and issue state-produced currency with a lower metal content. The new coins had less metal, but under state authority, they had the same currency value for payments and purchases. This allowed the state to create more currency from existing coin stocks. Inflation might occur, but the state could return to pre-reform standards, or even insist that taxes were paid only in the older, heavier currency. The problem in 119 BC involved the wealthy elite who were prospering while the state was struggling financially. To redress the balance, the Han government decided to expand what could be defined as currency in order to transfer its financial deficit to the wealthy elite. The records of the Grand Historian confirms that in 119 BC, the official in charge of finances stated, The state's funding has become very difficult. Wealthy businessmen have smelted metal and sold salt, accumulating large sums of gold as profit, but they are not willing to finance the country's urgent needs. 
Please reform the coinage to counter those who speculate, act against state interests, and buy up other people's property. The emperor observed the presence of white deer in the imperial palace gardens, and noted the government had accumulated a large quantity of silver and tin. It was customary for the Chinese aristocracy to present valuable jade to the emperor as part payment for their extensive land holdings. Jade came from the Tarim territories, so its purchase was a further transfer of wealth from landholders to trade networks that were financed and enabled by the state. Under new legislation, the Emperor Wu insisted that these payments be presented on specially prepared vellum sheets made from the hides of a unique type of white deer maintained in the imperial parks. The parchment sheets, known as leather money, were decorated with colourful imperial insignia. They had to be specially purchased from state officials at great cost, and this transferred further wealth from the elite to the government. Knowledge of Greek coinage may have suggested a further stratagem for the creation and transfer of wealth. The Emperor Wu noted that the state had acquired large quantities of so-called white metal, including silver and tin. Chinese merchants were becoming familiar with foreign silver currency and knew it to be a high-value trusted medium of exchange in distant territories. The emperor therefore decided to create a Chinese version of Greek silver coinage. This was the first silver coinage issued by China. The records of the Grand Historian records that the emperor ordered that three kinds of elite high-value coins were to be made from silver and tin. The big coins are round, and the dragon is the central figure. They are worth 3,000 bronze coin. He also ordered the local authorities to destroy half of the existing coinage and recast them on the lower standard of three measures. This is the probable origin of the Chinese Greek dragon coins. The coins replicated the size of the largest Greek coins in existence, the double decadrachmas. These were ingots with a silver content equivalent to 20 Greek drachma, or several weeks' pay for a Western soldier. In this era, double decadrachmas were being issued by minor Greek rulers who clung to power in the Indus territories. One example is a large coin issued by Minotas Nicator, who may have come to power in about 120 BC. Greek and Parthian regimes depicted kings on the obverse of their coins. However, in place of a portrait bust, the Emperor Wu presented the image of a coiled Chinese dragon as a state emblem. This image was a popular theme for artisans who carved the disc-like pieces of finest jade into images of coiled dragons. For the reverse of the dragon coin, the Emperor selected the abbreviated Greek script displayed on Parthian tetradrachmas. The text reads in Greek, Basileus Basileon, Arsakes, Epiphanes, Philhellen. On Parthian coins, these were statements displaying affinity for both Greek, Iranian and Parthian steppe cultures. Basileus Basileon was the Persian title King of Kings. Arsakes was the founder of the Parthian royal dynasty. Epiphanes signalled divine approval, and Philhellene announced that the regime protected and encouraged Greek culture. The text may have been copied from the coins of the Parthian king Mithridates I, who died in 132 BC, or his successor Mithridates II, who came to power in 124 BC. Both these rulers used the title King of Kings in place of the more modest epithet, Great King. The Han government probably selected the Parthian coin as a model because it was the most powerful state in the distant west, following the collapse of the Greco-Bactrian kingdom and the decline of the Seleucid regime in Syria and Babylon. A find from Chang Sing Sen in Shaanxi, made in 1990, confirms the appearance of the three white metal coin types produced by the Han government. 
The find included dragon coins made mainly from lead that must have appeared silvery white when first cast, but would have quickly tarnished to dull grey. Amongst these dragon types were three smaller square coin issues depicting a horse and a small oval ingot displaying a tortoise or turtle shell image. The three coin set depicted sacred animals and may also have symbolised mastery over three elements, air, land and sea. Powerful, Greco-Persian horses were superior to Chinese mounts, and the depiction of these animals on Han coins may have signalled military aspirations. Turtle shell, used in decorative veneers, was another valuable commodity arriving from the west via the Indian Ocean and the Indus trade routes through Bactria. The oval tortoise coins replicated the shape of turtle shells, but the appearance of the square horse currency was unusual. These types were perhaps influenced by Indian-style square coinage that depicted sacred or emblematic animals. The Indo-Greek king, Philoxenos, adopted elements of this design and issued silver square drachma with the image of a Greco-Macedonian cavalryman. Similar examples by contemporary Greek rulers may have influenced the Chinese designs. The dragon coins, found at Changxing Shen, each weighed about 125 grams. The relatively thin horse coins weighed 21 grams, and the single tortoise coin weighed 15 grams. This corresponds to a currency value of 500 bronze coins for the horse issue, and 300 coins for the tortoise piece. The metal composition of these white metal coins was 40% lead, 38% tin, and only 6% silver. A dragon coin issued on this standard therefore had the same silver content as a single Greek drachma. Early government issues of white metal coins were probably cast from an alloy of silver and tin, so they must have had a high intrinsic value. These coins were cast rather than produced using die strikes, as was the practice in Western countries. The casting process was easy to replicate, and despite the threat of harsh government punishments, including public execution in the marketplace, there was mass counterfeiting of coins. The silver was alloyed with increased quantities of tin or lead, and counterfeiters produced a mass of coins made entirely from these cheaper metals. Some counterfeiters reproduced the new issues in traditional bronze, with the expectation that this lower value alloy might have the coin value of white lead due to its design. The government may have participated in this process and produced lower value alloys to increase the quantity of coin in circulation. The records of the Grand Historian record, those who cast all types of new coins were executed, but the bureaucrats and the private people who covertly cast white coins were still innumerable. This could explain why Greek script on the reverse of the dragon coins is garbled or corrupted in many surviving examples. Alternatively, the text on the original state-issued coins may have been imperfectly copied. Perhaps the objective was only to create an image of Western design rather than a legible text. The ancient texts do not record the motives of the Chinese government in creating these dragon coins. Perhaps it was an effort to create a common medium for international exchange, enable commerce, purchase the aid of foreign regimes, influence foreign markets, or exert economic or political control over distant territories. The true motives cannot be known, because the scheme failed. The mass production of counterfeit coins caused the white metal currency project to fail within only a few years. This occurred as buyers, sellers and tax collectors lost confidence in the new coins and demanded the traditional bronze and copper coins as payment. Most examples of the new types must have been melted down for their metal content, with only a few lost or preserved as curios. Other monetary reforms may have contributed to the failure of the new white metal coins. In this period, the emperor 
ordered the minting of a new high-standard bronze coin called the Wusu or Five Measure Issue. This coin weighed 3.3 grams, had a currency rate close to its intrinsic value, and the design incorporated features such as a smooth raised rim that was harder to counterfeit. In 113 BC, new legislation made the production of this coin the sole authority of the imperial mint, and the state began to issue the new currency on a vast, unprecedented scale. Older coins were recast on this new uniform standard, which was produced in enough quantities to stabilise the monetary system and make low-level forgery an unprofitable enterprise. The Wusu became the standard Chinese coin for the following seven centuries. However, there may be other reasons why the introduction of high-value white metal coins failed. For further information concerning contacts between ancient China and the Greco-Roman world, please see my book, The Roman Empire and the Silk Roots. Thank you.